Yeah, hello and welcome to this brand new After Effects quick tip tutorial for mamoworld.com. My name is Matthias and I'm going to show you today how you can use our brand new tool Copy Mask to Layer. And what Copy Mask to Layer does is more or less clear by its name. It copies masks from one layer to other layers. And the problem you usually have with this is that when you copy a layer and paste it then onto another layer, it usually ends up in a completely different position than the position where the mask was located before, because the layer is moved, the layer has a different size, the layer is differently scaled, whatever. When you copy and paste basically masks with copy mask to layer, they always remain at exactly the same position where they have been before. So I'm going to show you this uh, on this example here. This is a short film uh, of mine or a scene of a short film where you can see uh, here uh, my friends Nikki and Matthias are walking uh, here uh, towards this car and actually the original scene looked like this. Yeah. So there was this boring background uh, behind them and then I prepared this matte painting here. Let's quickly make it visible. Just a picture like this, which is replacing here these uh, uh, signs and is also replacing here the background. And if you put those two on top of each other, it very nice looks uh, like this. Okay, you can imagine that at this point here some, some rotoscoping was necessary. So I have two masks here, one for Nikki, one for Matthias. Um, on on this layer yeah because if we deactivate them you can see uh, uh here you can see the problem the the the, the, the painting is uh, in front of them so i prepared this rotoscoping which is of course a lot of tedious work i did it here with tracker to mask so it was a little bit faster anyway so um here we have these two two masks around uh, the two two persons, and the point is this matte painting was just the first step, and then the second step, what I did, let's unhide me here these shy layers, is I took, I created some fire in the background, yeah, some. So the idea is they are walking away, and behind them here uh, this this fire occurs, and. At the moment, the fire does not occur behind them, as you can see, but it occurs before them. So we also need masks on those layers. In total, we have here three fire layers. So one of them is just smoke. I hope you can see it at least a bit here in the recording. Then we have one fire layer. Let me make this visible too. And then We've got here a second fire layer that just makes a fire larger. All these are uh, video copyload uh, stock elements from the Action Essentials collection. Um, anyway, so now we want also these to appear uh, behind Nikki and Matthias. So the most natural thing to do is not to do all the rotoscoping again, of course, but to copy those masks. Yeah. So let's go to Edit Copy and then go here to the first fire layer and go to edit paste and now you can see what happens hmm, we have here some strange now very small masks at the, at the wrong position yeah uh, they are s somehow animating but they are not where they have been before problem so i delete them once again and what you can do now with uh, copy mask to layer is to select the two masks, go to Select Mask, then go to the first fire layer here, for example, and go to Insert Mask. And now you can see that uh, the masks are right exactly at the, at, the, at the place where they have been before, and everything is working very nice. So let's deactivate those where we don't have uh, masks on yet. And you can see, yeah, the masks behave exactly as on the original layer where I copied them from. And when you look here at the keyframes, you can also see that we have exactly keyframes only at the positions uh, where we had keyframes on the original layer. 
very nice. So now we can do the same for the other two layers. So I select the two masks again, go to select masks. Now I select both of these layers simultaneously, go to insert masks. Now it takes a while to compute and we have now also those masks on those two layers. So I can make them visible and now I can see you have exact duplicates of the masks on all the layers and all the action is now taking place uh, behind Nikki and Matthias. So very nice, very uh, useful tool. I also got here a second example that uh, gives you an idea what you can do with uh, copy mask to layer. Here I've got a, this is still German, I've got a background layer and I've got this text copy mask to layer. And now suppose we want to have a mask that makes only a part of this uh, text visible, yeah? Like only such a part here and maybe second mask. And now we want to stay the mask exactly where it is and not move. So because currently the layer itself moves, yeah, so the masks, masks are moving with it. With copy mask to layer, you can use a very easy trick. Namely, we create a new null object or whatever else dummy layer we want to have. On this null object, we add the masks that we want to have. And now we select them, go to select mask and copy mask to layer and go to the, uh, the text layer where we want to have the masks and go to insert masks. And now we have those masks on the text layer. So we can safely delete our null again. So they are on the text layer, but they are not moving anymore. Yeah, The layer is moving. P position, you can see if the position is animated and the masks are not moving because we copied them from a layer where they have been totally static before and copy to mask always copies in a way that the masks are exactly placed as on the layer um, where we copied it from. So this is done by copy mask to layer by just adjusting here uh, the, the, the mask pass. You can see that the mask pass itself has now also two keyframes, although it had no keyframes in the original null layer where it came from. And yeah, okay, what happens here is the layer moves um, left to right. So the masks with the same speed uh, travel from right to left such that um, they effectively stay at the position where they have uh, been before. Very nice. Okay, the last thing I want to show is here this second option. So far we always use this insert as few keyframes as possible option and we also have here this insert keyframe at each frame option. And let me also quickly show this. So we delete these two masks and now again create our uh, can also be solid, basically it doesn't matter. Yeah, we create our other layer have some mask on it. Let's say also we remove this here maybe a little bit uh, just to make it a little bit more interesting. Let's say if here some whatever fancy movement. Yeah. And now we want to have the same movement as uh, the same mask also on the text layer. So we M select the mask, go to select mask and I'll go to the text layer and go to insert mask and now you can see that the exact same mask is also on, uh, on, on the text layer. Yeah? So this yellow thing is now uh, the mask on the text layer and if we look at it we can see that it has now one keyframe for each frame of the mask pass, which makes it a little bit more precise. So I delete it or I delete here the mask again and do the same with this option, insert as few keyframes as possible, go here to the mask pass, uh, uh, to the mask, select mask, go again to the text layer, insert mask, and now you can see that the mask has only a few keyframes created and it is 
roughly following the blue one here, yeah? but, but not very precisely. So if you have complex movements, like in this case, you can see this option, insert as few keyframes as possible, is very nice because you have only a few keyframes, but it is not always 100% accurate. Yeah. So in this case, it was 100% accurate. And in the case where you wanted the mask to stay exactly where it is, it was also 100% accurate. So in this case here, it is not not 100% precise. So if you want it to be 100% pre precise, we can delete it, select it again, and now choose this insert keyframe at each frame option. Insert it, and now you have yeah many many keyframes, but 100% correct movement. So this is already everything I wanted to show about copy mask uh, to layer. Um, ah, one thing I wanted to say it it costs it costs five dollar yeah so it's not very much I think. Nice little helper and. If you like Marmo World, if you like my tutorials and want to support me with this, then I think this is a very good uh, chance to say thank you and help me by yeah, purchasing uh, this script. Okay, that's everything from my side. I hope you enjoyed this quick tip tutorial. I'm Matthias for marmoworld.com.